I'm Patrick Bailey with IQless.com. Today is June 2nd, 2020. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to design a wine bottle shaped doorstop in Fusion 360 that you can 3D print. Okay, it's been a little while, but roughly almost a year ago when I moved into this house, we had a need for a doorstop, kind of a weighted doorstop. So I thought, hey, I'd print some out and weigh them down. So I did that last year. And here's a link to what we did last year. And I'll also put a link in the show notes. Uh, to a video we did showing you how to design it and put it out there. Now we actually use it a lot and it works pretty well, but my mother-in-law doesn't exactly like the design. My wife likes it, my mother-in-law doesn't. So she wanted something a little different. So I came up with an idea of doing a uh, something kind of like a wine bottle shape to fill full of pennies and also make it kind of extra tall so it's easy to pick up and move with your hand versus having a little handle on there. So um, with that, I went through a, just another thing I like to say sometimes, I went through a bunch of iterations <laughs> So I had a little tiny example we did uh, that didn't work out too well. And I had a second example where I, uh, in Fusion 360 you can do threads, which I will show, but I had the threads actually cut into the design, so it ended up just printing into space, and so that all got messed up. And the third time was the charm, and so far, uh, my mother-in-law, she's liking it and using it right now. So. Um, for those who may just be interested in a doorstop, I did put it out on prusaprinters.org, and I'll put a link in the show notes. So if you really like this design, you can go download it and print it. And the thing is, it comes in three parts. That way, I made sure to make sure every single one was printable uh, on a Prusa Mini, trying to get that height down right there. So um, with that, let me go over the numbers real quick. So the numbers to print this out, to print the bottom, took 15 hours and 13 minutes to print. It took 9.8 cents of electricity, and it weighs 0.124 kilograms at $20 per kilogram. comes out to $2.48 worth of material, and in total it costs about $2.60 to print the bottom. Now for the middle, that took about 8 hours and 4 minutes to print. It took 5.5 cents of electricity, and it weighs about 0 0.06 kilograms at $20 per kilogram. comes out to... Oh, I did that. Is that right? Dollar? Oh, I must have done that equation wrong. Okay, we fixed the number. So... At 0 0.06 kilograms, at $20 per kilogram, comes to a dollar twenty worth of material for the center. So the center costs about a dollar twenty-six. And then finally, for the top, this one took six hours and thirty-one minutes to print. It took four point five cents of electricity, and it weighs 0 0.048 kilograms at twenty dollars per kilogram, comes out to ninety-six cents worth of material. So in total, it cost a dollar one to print um, for this guy. Now, if you put them all together, all together, it took a little under thirty hours to print them all. And it cost $4.87 roughly in total. And also, this is printed in Prusa. What is this? Beige. Prusa has a beige PLA, which I, I bought this because I want to print out some dinosaur bones. I think it might be a good color. But also, I printed a white one out for my mother-in-law, but now I just printed a beige one out as an example. I'm going to go see which one she prefers. She might like the beige. We shall see. Um, but uh, a couple things to note for those who may be interested. Okay, there's that, there's that. Ah, a couple things I did um, before I go over the actual design. A couple things that I do, sometimes if I'm having some issues with some threading, like these had a little bit of an issue. Um, I got this white lithium grease that I bought a couple of years ago, and I put a link in the show notes. And sometimes I dab it on my on my uh, 3D prints if I'm doing like, um, more often than not, the threads are okay, but sometimes it needs a little bit of extra, and so I use this, and it works pretty well. Just a little bit will do, and then kind of work it. Uh, another really important thing, if you don't have a deburring tool, if you're into 3D printing, you need a deburring tool. Uh, this is a tool they use in industry to get the burrs off of things. So think of, you know, I used to use this a long time ago. I worked at a CNC shop. And so you have aluminum things that you would fabricate, and they'd have kind of sharp edges. And you can take this. It has like a, a little corner there, and you could pull it along, and it kind of... Uh, smooths out those rough edges just by carving it. And it can carve into aluminum just fine, so it can carve into your plastic really easily. So a lot of times I might take this, or I have an edge, and deburr it, and just kind of go around, and you can see it makes some little squigglies as it pulls stuff out. So if you don't have a deburring tool, you need one in your arsenal. I use it a lot. Um, okay, and then with that, the idea would be you put this together, um, then you got a cap, and then you can just, uh, before you put the cap on, fill it full of, full of weight. Now for me, I like to use pennies. Um, 
because in a sense they're cheap. They're kind of the, the densest thing I can find relatively easily that are consistent. And technically, in a sense, they're free because they're still pennies. So the minute you're done with them, you can actually use them. They're have value. Uh, I forget how much I put in here, but one thing, if you're going to do something like this with pennies, uh, you can go down to the bank and they have a big box of, uh, I think they come in, yeah, I got. I have a box of $25 for the pennies. So every so often I go get a, I like to weigh things down with some print sometimes with pennies. So every so often I just get 25 bucks for the pennies and then I have them when I need them so I can weigh things down. So there's that. Now with that, let me go over how do you how do you do this and if you want to do something like this, how do you do it in Fusion 360? Okay, so let's get going. So one thing you can do in Fusion 360 is you can bring in images that you can kind of use to trace around while you're doing 3D doing design. So here I have an image of a wine bottle I found on the internet. So I just downloaded that. And so now with that, let's get going into Fusion 360. So uh, one thing that's always a pet peeve, I like to bring it up most times I do a Fusion 360 video is to make sure your orientation is correct on Fusion 360 so that your prints, uh, when you make STL files, are at the correct orientation. Just today I downloaded something that was uh, supposed to be flat like this, and the video was like, the actual STL file was like this, so I had to, I had to move it. And I just, why, why do that to people? So to do that, you go down here, go to your preferences, and what you should see is here in uh, the, in general, here we are. In the general, there's a default model orientation and you want to make it Z up, not Y up. So make it Z up. And then that means if you do that, that means this plane right here is kind of the same, is the same orientation as the plane of the, of the uh, bottom of your 3D printer. So now let's go click here, say new component. And I'll say bottom of line bottle, boom, and I'll click on that, bring up the origin, and then what I can do is I want to insert my image. But before I do that, I want to get the right size. So I'll click on this, say create a sketch, and then I'll get in this plane here. And what I want to do, I'll hit the S button. To, I have shortcut keys already set up, but I want a two-point rectangle. Click on that, click that, and if, one thing that's nice in Fusion 360 is you can type in precise numbers. So here on the y-axis, I want to go to 150. I'll go to 150 here too. I don't need to go that wide. But then I can use this kind of as an indicator because I want to go, uh, I want, I don't, in this case, I made each section at most 150 millimeters tall. So now I can go, I can finish my sketch. Then I can go insert a canvas. And so I will insert from my computer and I will find wherever I put this. 3D prints, there we go. 3D prints, wine bottle, and find that image I found. I click that, and I select this face, and it sticks it on there, but then it's upside down, so I'll turn it 180, and then I can resize it and position it by cl clicking the square. And what I want to do is kind of center it right there and see how tall I want to get it. So if I want to do, uh, for example, I just want to do two sections that might be big enough. So let's just do two sections for this video. I hit OK, and now I've got that. So now what I'm going to do is I'll make a new sketch. I like to zoom out. So I'll right click on that, say create a sketch, go back to the Z. And what I want to do is I want to kind of trace this bottle in the center roughly. So I'll hit um, what I can do. Let me remove the first sketch so I don't have to look at it. Hit the L key for line, click there in the center, and then come out here. And let's make it precise. There were 51 mil, uh, millimeters. I'll make it uh, 50 even. Hit the L key again. Click there. And I'll start to work my way up. So then I'll say ah, roughly about there. 125, 6. I'll say 125. Hit enter. And then what I'll do, I'll hit my S key for my shortcuts. And I'll choose a three-point arc. Now, if you're, if you're doing this, you have to set your own shortcuts. If you don't have, if you hit the S key, the shortcut button will come up. But if you don't have the three-point arc there, you have to might just search for arc, and then three-point arc comes in there, and then you can use this little sweeping arrow to add it to your shortcuts if you don't have it there. So there, I'll click on that button, click, you know, roughly, probably right about here, and then I can zoom in and kind of make a close arch there. Now I'll click there, click there, and kind of do the other arch, roughly. Boom. Uh, well, in this case, I've gone, I don't need to, 
don't know why I did that. I don't need to, well, let me bring back the sketch. Oh, I need to do it a little bit. Yeah, okay. Because there's my, my 150. So let me bring back that sketch. So I do need the first arc. I don't need the second arc there. Uh, in fact, we could probably move that a little bit. There we go. And then what I can do is this is going to come into the center. So align, come here, go to, oh, well, I can't exactly hit the center. Hit L, hit there, go straight up. Just make it nice to hit that. Hit that, go to the center, boom. Hit T for trim, and I'll trim that extra part off. And then now what I can do is I can kind of go uh, select my edit. Well, let me go hit my S key, and I'll do an offset. Do the offset, and it says, what do you want to choose? I'll choose all of that, and I'll pull it in. In this case, I'll be precise, say, 3 millimeters. And so now I have my shape I can select because I want to auto, auto, uh, ultimately rotate that. So then I'll come in here and say, okay, I want to do that. I want to do that. Uh, but see, this three millimeters is not going to be good enough for my threads. So I come here, hit that, come over here and say, uh, let's do 15. 15. And I'll come down. Um, let's see, come down, let's see, come down 10, we'll come down 10 and then we'll go out to here. And then what, cause what we want to do is we want to rotate this thing and I'll start to trim this. I'll trim that, trim that and trim that. I'll leave this out here because that'll be used by my other line. Well, let me trim it, trim that too. Uh, and then what we want to do, because we need to come in a little bit, say so here, come in a little bit, come in three, eh, come in four millimeters here, go down, and we'll go down, let's see, we'll go down 13, and then we'll come across here. But then now one problem here is if I'm going to rotate this, I don't want this I can't have this going out like that. So what I'll do is I'll hit here and I'll come down, hit tab, go to the degrees, do 45 degree angle, and then work this down here, click that. And then I will trim that out, trim that out, trim that out. And let's see where I'm at, let's see. I need to trim some of this other stuff here. And, oops, not that one. Leave that one in there because I want to rotate and then I'll get rid of that. I'm using the trim key right now. And then hopefully I've got it set up where I can select. Oh, no, I'm missing probably something down here. Oh, there we go. Right there. I did not go all the way to there. And all the way oops, down. There we go. Now I can select that shape. So hit finish sketch, hit my S key and say revolve. So I'll select that and I'll revolve that. Then I just select an axis and I'll select the center axis right here and hit okay. And then now I've got my bottom shape. Now mine, yeah, is a little different than this, but this gives you the idea. And then I can hit my S and you can hit threads and then you select the outer thread here. Then you have to select model. You want to model the thread, not just show it on there. And then see, so it'll say, hey, I'm doing an M30 by 3.56 G right hand. Fantastic. Hit OK. And the last thing to do this section is I do a um, Q, which is a press pull tool. So just press Q to print with the press pull tool. Then I select the very outside of this edge. And because we're dealing with plastic, this is a little too precise. We'll so make it too tight. So I like to bring it back. And I like to bring it back negative 0.2 typically, but on this it actually was a little tight, so you could actually experiment from a little bit further back. 0.2 worked, but maybe a little 0.3 might be okay. And then that's my bottom shape. And there we go. So we save. Then, well, I'm going to save right now. Then I go new component, and this will be the top. And we'll start working on that. Okay, so now I can hide the other one if I want to. 
to probably do for a second. And I'll bring back this origin and I'll say create a sketch. And I'll go on that plane, that one. Get my S key, make a two point rectangle. And I'll say 150, 150 to match that one. Then I'll make a second one and I'll say 150 by 150 again. And then we'll go back to my bottom and I'll say show the canvas. There we go. So we're showing the canvas and I want to show uh, the second sketch on the bottom. Which I went kind of high on that. Did I go that high? Let me go back to choosing that one. Oh, I guess I did overshoot it. Okay, I went too high. That's far beyond 150, huh? Ah, bad example. I should have cut it off at that 150. I went too high. So in this case, I messed up. But you get the idea. You should, I should have limited myself lower. Let me see. Oops. Let's go back here. And so I, even though I'm in a new sketch on a different one, I can actually still reference some of the stuff over here. So what I can do is I can bring up this, uh, oops, sorry, let me edit sketch again. So I'm in the sketch and I can hit my S key, go to my three point arc and click on that point, which is actually in the other object. And then come up here and kind of get that shape and then hit an L key, start here and go just straight up. And then we'll have a little bottle thing here. I like to do uh, 90 plus 45. You can do math in these. Do a little degree there and up and back over. And then maybe go up just a slight bit more. And then we will go across. And I'll go beyond a little too far there. And I'll go down to the center here. Where they're gonna meet right there. Let me go to the bottom, I guess. And I'll overshoot it. Because I can always use the trim key, T to trim. And so that's been brought back down. And then let's see. Hit my L key, come here, have it come across, trim that. And then I should be able to use my offset and again, bring it in, you know, three millimeters, which looks fine up here. Um, only thing is here, I probably want to do a 45 degree angle. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Well, up there doesn't matter because it's probably going to go over just fine, but I'll do it anyway. And I will trim, 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 trim that guy, trim that, have that go across, trim that one. I still can choose it. Trim that guy up. Okay, now we cut ourselves off. Oh, no, I haven't. So there we go. So now we got that. So now we come down here where that should be lined up. So he will come here. Come up there. And actually here we're gonna go a little further up so we have some room, so I'll say three millimeters. And that's gonna be our attachment there. And so we go, uh, and we'll go 45 degrees and we'll go out to there. Well, I guess we don't need to do that. We don't need to do 45 degrees right there. We could if we wanted, but I will do, just go straight up. There we go. Trim that up, trim that up. And I think I got it. Okay, so we'll finish that sketch. And then we'll hit our S key, choose Revolve, choose that. <clears throat> Select the axis there in the center. And boom, you got the top. And then all I gotta do is I will hide the one at the bottom. 
Hit the S key, choose a thread, click there, modeled, hit OK, press Q for my press pull tool, push that, and go down, negative point 0.2. There we go. Boom. Now I can bring that one back, and you can see how they're going to kind of line up right there. And there you go. There's how you could do your own wine bottle or do a different kind of wine bottle, any kind of design like that, with the thread. So, um, it's really cool that you can do that in Fusion 360. So um, there it is. There's a real quick tutorial on how to make your own weighted doorstop. Okay, this week has turned into a fun week for me. Uh, on a personal note, we were doing some backyard work, and I went to Home Depot to buy some garden staples to hold down the plastic. Now these garden staples, you think of them like giant staples, are about six inches long, and you kind of just push them into the plastic to hold them down to the ground. But they were out at Home Depot, so I thought maybe I can solve this with 3D printing. So I found a tent stake someone put up there, and so I'm printing those out right now to, as a test. But I think I'm going to try to design something somewhat like one of these uh, staples. And that's probably what the next video is about, if I can get it to work. Uh, it did kind of jump the queue. I was hoping to do the point, uh, my revised 0.25 nozzle video, which I still haven't printed anything out. But that is coming. So. But my plan right now in the next few videos, I'm going to try to do this garden staple thing. And after that, probably try to do the new uh, 0.25 nozzle.